can get that going. All right, so um, I want to just start out today by circling back to something that I just briefly mentioned the last time in class, which was the Messier catalog. So um, as we look around at the night sky, um, we see mostly from our perspective stars, uh, but we also see uh, kind of fuzzy blobs in the sky. And it turns out that comets also look like fuzzy blobs in the sky. If any of you had the pleasure of seeing Comet Neowise this summer, or I guess last summer, um, then you may have seen what I'm talking about. It's just a fuzzy blob in the sky that persists for sometimes several weeks and then it's gone. Um, but other things look like comets because they're just fuzzy. And those things, uh, the scientist Charles Messier made a catalog of because he wanted to help prevent other astronomers from wasting their time on things that weren't comets. Because at that time in astronomy, it was the best thing if you found a new comet. It would be named after you. It was fabulous. Uh, so nowadays, uh, Messier is most famous for the catalog rather than his comets, but so it goes. Uh, and the full array of objects in the Messier catalog are uh, compiled here. Um, some of them are star clusters consisting of stars that are grouped together that were born at one time. We'll learn about those later in class. Some of them are galaxies, so huge collections of stars, gas, and dust all orbiting around a common center. Usually they have a black hole in the middle. And some of them are uh, nebulae, so some of them are uh, molecular clouds of which stars are born. And some of them are planetary nebulae, like this one, number 57, that's the icon for our Moodle page, um, that are created when stars explosively die. So I just wanted to show you all these objects in the Messier catalog. NASA has a cool website uh, that I linked to on this page, and you can go check them out. And you can use this when you're doing your star project to find images of those um, objects that might not be very clearly uh, pictured in Starry Night or in um, Stellarium. All right. So um, this idea of star clusters, those are just stars that are in the same location in space. And like I said, they're, they're generally born at the same time out of the same initial cloud of stuff. Um, and there's some debate over what is a star cluster and what isn't one, because when we just look at them on the sky, we can't tell whether they're all, uh, you know, at a similar distance from Earth or whether some of them are really far and some of them are really close to us. And so that's actually something um, that has been recently settled for this particular star cluster only last month uh, when they finally discovered using the new data from the Gaia telescope, which we'll explore today, that these stars are not actually at the same distance from Earth. So this is not a star cluster. Uh, but for uh, hundreds of years, astronomers thought that it was. So debates like this are still being settled today. Astronomy is very much an active science uh, where new data is always coming in and reshaping our view of the universe. All right, so that ties into what we're talking about today because today's topic is all about how we measure the distances to stars and how far away they are from us. So we're gonna have to start out by uh, establishing a common language uh, around units and scientific notation so that we are all talking about the same thing. And then we'll dive into how far the stars are. We'll explore several different units that astronomers use to measure the distance to stars, such as the light year. Uh, and then we'll look at uh, specific techniques to measure distances to the closest stars using triangulation and parallax. And out of that, we will learn about the unit called the parsec. And then finally, like I mentioned, you're going to play with data from the Gaia telescope. Uh, during your group activity at the very end. 